This is Ada, a small town just outside of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And it has a story that doesn't just hit close to home, but is something I've experienced myself. Just a few years back, a couple was cross-country skiing on a trail in this park. Dusk is coming quickly and they begin to hear a rustling noise behind them. After ignoring it the first couple of times, it gets closer. And that's when a panic sets in and they decide to cut through an open field to try making it back to their car quicker. And that's when they see her. Dressed in white, they see a woman standing at the edge of the tree line. The couple then decides to unlatch their skis and take their chances on foot in the hopes of getting to safety faster. And this is just one of the many sightings that would be reported of the Ada Witch, and this is her story. Sometime during the 19th century, a husband started to suspect that his wife was having an affair. One night, he pretends to be asleep while she quietly sneaks out. The husband then follows her out of the home where he catches her in an open field with her lover. When the husband realizes what his wife was up to, he attacked her and her mysterious companion. After viciously beating his wife to death, he turned his attention to her lover. The lover fought back so hard that the husband became fatally wounded, and unfortunately, both men succumbed to their injuries. The story of the couple skiing through the park is nothing new around here. In fact, many people have claimed to have heard a concerning fight in the forest. It's been described as sounding like something out of a horror scene, but there's never anyone around. At one point, this area was opened up to local hunters, but only lasted briefly, after many different reports were being made of a ghostly figure with a flowy dress on that would appear to them around dusk. There is also a story from a longtime resident named Julie, who claimed that on her way home from work, she had come across a woman wearing a bluish-white dress standing in the middle of the road, waving her arms and mouthing the words, help me. But in the blink of an eye, the woman disappeared. And with all of this information, we're brought here to Finley Cemetery. This is where the Ada Witch is believed to be laid to rest, once the local teens caught on to the story, they started visiting the presumed witch and began to vandalize her tombstone. Soon after, the news broadcasted a Halloween special on the Ada Witch and exposed the real story behind the vandalized gravesite. The woman who that headstone belonged to, a woman named Sarah McMillan, passed away from typhoid fever in the year 1870. Maybe the teens targeted Sarah's site because they assumed she must have been the victim of the murderous affair because she died at such a young age. It seems to me that when reconstructing her new tombstone, they made sure to list her cause of death as typhoid fever, specifically to keep vandalists away. Or maybe it's just a cover-up for the horror story that we know as the Ada Witch. Whether you believe in the story or not is solely your decision, but I'm about to tell you a story that might make your mind up. So yes, believe it or not, I have my own personal experience with the Ada Witch. I grew up with this story being told around every campfire. And when I told anyone the tale, they wanted to visit her. She's known to make an appearance at the cemetery every now and then. So one summer night, that's exactly what I did. After telling my sister and brother-in-law her story, we went out to Finley Cemetery. After arriving, the sun started to set. I brought my sister and brother-in-law to Sarah's grave. What happens next sends chills down my spine still to this day. My sister insisted on getting a photo of the tombstone to show one of her friends who was a big fan of haunted adventures, but for some reason, the picture just would not turn out. Every time she snapped a photo on her iPhone, a grave film would show up, hiding everything that was in plain sight. She tried multiple times with the same result. She began to get frustrated and asked her husband if he would try snapping the photo from his phone. So he tried to get a shot of the grave only to have the same gray film covering his view. At this point, I had begun to get nervous as I had just seen a white figure moving along the tree line out of my peripheral view. 
Now feeling extremely afraid to face the figure I had just seen out of the corner of my eye, I offer to take the picture with my phone as soon as it means we can leave. So I snap two pictures that from a quick glance seem to have turned out fine and we hustle back to the car. On the way back home, my sister asked me to send her the pictures I took so that she can forward them on to her friend and this is what I saw. In the first picture, there was a big round orb floating just above the tombstone. And after the flash lights the area up, the second picture shows the same orb dashing across the view of my camera, leaving a ghostly looking trail in its path. This will always be an encounter that I'll remember, and although it doesn't necessarily prove the existence of the Ada Witch, there's absolutely no denying that I met something that night in the cemetery that wanted to be seen.